Hi everyone and welcome to the latest WASP development log. In this log I'm super excited to show you two new features that I've been adding to WASP which will improve your workflow I believe quite a lot. Uh, the first feature is a small feature but it's a quite interesting one and it was a feature that has been requested by a user on Discord, Esteban Ruiz. And what this feature was is it allows you to specify on which part global constraints have to be applied. So by default, um, in the way which was done in WASP till now, uh, whenever you apply a global constraint, it's applied to the whole aggregation indiscriminately of the part type. So for example, in this case, I have an aggregation where I have three parts and uh, I have two constraints applied of those part. One constraint is a mesh constraint that allows growth only inside the mesh constraint and the second constraint is a plane constraint that allows growth just on the positive Z axis of this plane. So you see that my aggregation starts along this line because of the plane constraint and grows only within the volume that I'm given. Now let's imagine that for a second that we want to actually start to customize a little bit uh, the look of this aggregation and it's actually possible to do this right now by uh, using uh, a new input that has provided on both constraint which is an input that allows you to say on which part should this constraint act. For example if I'll take my box constraint my mesh constraint here which is based on this volume and use uh, connect a panel saying shop and I would now reset my aggregation you now see that my bridge components are actually allowed to grow outside um, outside the box because the constraint is now applied just on the part. If I would do the same with the with the plane constraint you now see that the bridges kind of do not consider any constraint but they are allowed to grow everywhere. Now what's interesting is that you can put multiple names in here so if you don't plug anything the constraint will be applied to all uh, part types. Well if you plug you can plug a panel and make sure the multi-line data is unchecked and there you can type multiple um, uh, part types. So if, for example I would type bridge as well here and now reset. Now this is once again applied to the bridge part as well but in this case not to the truck part. That's The truck part is right now not allowed to grow at all but if it would that would be applied just to that. So, as I said, this is a very small uh, feature that has been added, but it kind of allows you to create a variety of different geometries and use each geometry to control the appearance of different part types. So I believe it should allow you to have a much higher level of control over the final result of your aggregations. The second feature I've added is something that I'm very happy about and I'm very much looking forward to hear your feedback about how it could be used. Because this is something that uh, brings WASP to in the position of being able to not only generate geometries but also generate varying geometries based on the different configuration a cell will find itself into. So this feature is something that has been called uh, smart attributes and smart attributes are specifically attributes that are allowed to be uh, displayed or not based on how the cell is connected to other cells. So in this uh, example we have uh, a simple aggregation based on a singular um, rectangular cell and we can see here that aggregated um, by aggregating these cells we kind of obtain uh, some sort of an agglomeration of these uh, box units but uh, you'll see also that on this cell there are a set of other geometries which are available and these geometries kind of allow to uh, reinterpret this simple aggregation as some sort of uh, building scale uh, assembly and so whenever you're doing something that is on a building scale it's very much important that different components that will create a cell are allowed to appear or not appear based on how the cell is uh, configured. So for example very simple this balcony should appear only if this, the connection number one is not occupied. If connection number one is occupied the balcony should, 
just not be displayed because it just doesn't make sense. And on the opposite side, this frame that would represent some sort of a door should be displayed just if connection to is actually connected to another unit. While instead, once again, this uh, little bridge should, this little roofing should be displayed just if connection three and zero are not occupied. So how do we create a, a smart attribute? Let's start with the simplest one. So let's start with our balcony. And so if you now go to the elements tab, you'll find two new components. One, and one of them is the was smart attribute. So if you bring it in, the smart attribute looks pretty much like an attribute and in, on top of a normal attribute has two additional inputs. And so the first inputs are the same that you've got to know in wasp attributes. So we have to give it a name. And so for example, I'm gonna call it balcony. I need to give it an ID, uh, I need to give it a value and the value is gonna be the geometry that I wanna use. So I'm gonna create a geometry component. Right click, set one geometry and select my balcony. And now connect it. And lastly, we have to specify if the attribute is transformable or not. And in this case, being a geometry, we have to specify that it is transformable. So we're gonna create a Boolean toggle, set it to true and connect it to transformable. Now, the other two inputs are the inputs that make the attribute, so to say, smart. So the first input is we have to provide all the connections of the part that the attribute will be attached to. So we're gonna take our connections that have been created here and connect them in the connection input. And let's be aware now that we have six connections. And so what we're gonna have to specify in the CM input that stands for connection mask is we have to specify six values that will define whether the attribute has to be, um, uh, whether that connection has to be occupied, unoccupied or simply ignored. So in this case, I'm gonna create a panel. I'm gonna make it small and I'm gonna right click and uncheck multi-line data so that I can have multiple data lines. And so all I care for the balcony to appear is that the connection number one is unoccupied. So I have to specify six values in order for each connection. So connection zero is ignored, so it's gonna be a zero. Connection one has to be free. So we represent free with a one. And then connection two, three, four and five, they're all gonna be uh, ignored because all we care is that connection one is free. So when we take this and plug it in, we can then take this attribute and plug it in our part. Now that we set up our, um, our smart attribute, we can go on and reset our aggregation and we can now display it by activating the preview of this last two components. And so now let's go on and for example, extract the attribute the way in which you would be used to be doing, to do it in Wasp. So if I would go and Wasp and say, get attribute by name, and I would connect the part out. And then for the ID, I'm gonna say balcony. What this is gonna return me is gonna return me as you're used to, all the attributes for one attribute for each part. So it doesn't matter what the configuration of the cell is, the attributes will be created anyway and, and will be displayed. So this is the standard way. So if you wanna access all the attributes you can and you could also process them in a variety of ways. But now Wasp has a new component which is called get valid smart attributes. And this component looks exactly the same or nearly exactly the same as the get attribute by name component. But instead of taking the parts as an input, it takes the whole aggregation. And the reason for that is not gonna check each part individually, but it's gonna check the whole aggregation to see if the location of the cell within, within the aggregation is a valid one for this attribute to appear. So if we're gonna go and connect the aggregation there, and then as well, we are gonna request the balcony attribute. You'll now see that when I select this in green, not all the attributes are returned, 
but just the attributes that are in a conf in a location which is a valid conf which has a valid configuration for this balcony to appear. So if I go on and turn the preview of this other component off, you now see that I don't have any balcony that ends up inside another cell. And that's because the configuration of the cell is checked correctly to avoid that. So let's, for example, now try and create a second attribute, uh, a second smart attribute. But this time, let's try to create a smart attribute that will be displayed just if the connection is occupied. So I'm going to hide the grasshopper preview for a moment. And so I'm going to go to elements and bring another smart attribute. I'm going to use this door frame here. And so I'm going to call this attribute door. I'm going to create a geometry component and assign the door. So set one geometry and select the poly surface of the door and connect it to the value. And finally, I'm going to create a toggle, set it to true and connect it to the transformable input. We're going to now connect once again the connections of our part. And then we're going to as well create a panel to create our connection mask. So I'm going to uncheck multi-line data. And so now I have to turn my preview on and for a moment turn everything off down here. And so now I'll see that in this case, I don't mind whether all the other connections are occupied or not, but all I care about is that connection number two is occupied. So there is another cell there. So the way, the way in which we specify that has to be another cell is by providing a number minus one. So I'm going to start and say connection zero is ignore, connection one is ignore. Connection two has to be occupied, so it's going to be minus one. Connection 3 has to be ignore, connection 4 ignore, connection 5 ignore. I'm going to connect this and then with shift press connect my second attribute. Ah, sorry. Oops. I'm going to reset my aggregation. And if I now come back and turn things on again, I'm going to have my balconies here. And if I'm then create a second component, so I get valid smart attributes, connect my aggregation, and now request the door attribute. You'll notice that my doors in this case appear exclusively, and maybe reduce the transparency of this a little bit. You see that my door are now appearing exclusively inside other cells because they are allowed to appear just when the connection number two is covered by a second cell. And so it makes sense that it actually creates a, a door-like component. So something that appears just when the connection is occupied. Now, what's interesting is that this method of creating smart attributes does not work with only one connection, but it can work with any type and any configuration of connections. So for example, you could have a a smart attribute that is triggered when two connections are occupied and one is not occupied. So it really allows to, you to kind of start thinking about much more complex algorithms like something like marching cubes or a wave function collapse, which could be applied to not only the standard rectangular geometries they're applied to, but literally to any kind of geometry. So for example, let's take another look and I'm going to again hide everything here and let's look at this uh, little roof here. So this component should be created just if connection 3 and connection 0 are both unoccupied. So I'm going to go on and just copy paste the previous smart attribute. I'm going to call this roof. I'm going to right click to assign my roof geometry to it. And so now what I have to specify is that I have to specify that connection zero has to be free. So that's going to be a one. Connection one is ignore. Connection two is ignored. Connection three has to be free. And then four and five are ignored again. 
So if now I'll take this other attribute and also shift plug that there. I'm gonna then reset my aggregation again to have it. And then I'm gonna get another get attribute by name and call it roof. If I now turn the preview on, as well as the preview of my aggregation, you see that I now I have my balconies, which are just in the open place, my doors, which are just on the inside, and then once again my roofs, which are as well exclusively in locations where uh, this is done. And so what's also interesting about the smart attributes is that all this calculation about the configurations in which they're valid are not done during aggregation but are done afterwards. So adding more attributes will not, of, unless of course you have very high complex geometry, but it will not impact too much the performance. And so you can go on and create very quickly aggregations and then use these get valid attributes to actually check the configuration of each attribute and so you could go on and add more and so as you can see this will be tested and once again all the attributes will just appear in uh, uh, valid locations so yeah this is it for this tutorial uh, of course, the smart attribute is still a quite experimental feature, so I'm sure there might still be some bugs and some issues with it. So if you find any, please let me know. And as demonstrated by the previous feature, I really ask you to, uh, as much as possible, try to use the Discord channel to let me know what kind of features you're interested in and what kind of features you would like to see implemented in WASP. As if it's possible and if I have the time, I will be more than happy to implement them and make WASP more useful for you in uh, your future work. So for now, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.